Hi, I'm Paul. Hi, I'm Paul. We're going to be uh, taking a look at the performance of your sites and apps that you've submitted to us. Now, we've taken a very quick look at some of them, but we haven't spent that long doing it just so that we can show you how we kind of come at these things fresh. So we're going to be doing an audit of both the page load time. And the run time. And so, uh, well, let's get on with it. OK, All cool. Right, so uh, so these were the sites that you submitted. And uh, let's just we're just going to take a few of them. Um, so the first one to come up, uh, it's my uni days, uh, Paul. Yes. I know that you took a look, and it looked interesting. It did. It did, drive it did. This? All right. So um, step number one, always for these things, for me at least, uh, is to do a timeline. So go into DevTools, hit Timeline, go to Frames mode. And you can hit Command E, which should do uh, start things recording. And then normally, I'll just do a bit of a scroll test, maybe interact with a few things, just kind of get the sense of what's going on. And Oh, you've got an unusual keyboard now. How do we get back to it? There we go. There we go. All right, that's good. Now, um, so what do we see here? Yeah, so the first thing that we really, really care about is the fact that we've got the 60 frames a second line and then the 30 frames a second line. And you can see it, that's on the right hand side of the top part. Now, we, we never want our bars to go above the 60 frames a second line. This is kind of super critical. If we want a 60 frames a second app, which we do never go above. Now, you can see we are obviously going way above on some of these. So just by clicking um, in the timeline, you can start to figure out what's actually going on. Now, this is the thing that really started to bother me, uh, which is this little exclamation mark that you can see on the left-hand side. Uh, so if we spin this, oh. let's click over on here. Oh, okay, there you go. Spin this down. Uh, you can see that we get some recalc style, and we get some layout, and you can see that there's this little exclamation mark on the left-hand side, and that's basically when you roll over the the, the exclamation mark, you see this note: "For synchronous layout is a possible performance bottleneck." Now, what's really happening here is uh, we've forced Chrome to answer a question about the dimension or the position of an element um, when it wasn't really expecting to. So it has to go off, and it has to lay out the whole of the page, probably in this case. Oh, it's a partial scope. So not the whole page, but it still had to do some work that it didn't expect to do in layout. Then the next thing we're actually going to do is probably change some style. Right? Recalculate, recalculate style suggests that we then change things, and that invalidated uh, the previous calculation we did. So then we lay out again. So this is called layout thrashing. And it's this idea of stepping back and forth, going layout, change some styles, layout, change some styles. You'll see it. Uh, it'll commonly, in the DevTools, it'll uh, visualize as a number of just purple bars, um, yeah, just yeah. like a big kind of cascade of purple. Yeah. Uh, uh, often, and on the left-hand side, you'll see kind of recalc style layout going back and forth, and hopefully this little arrow indicating that, yeah, this is a problem. Now, don't be, don't be confused by the fact that it's often wrapped in a yellow bar. It's triggered by JavaScript, but it's not JavaScript, right? So right. It can, it can be triggered by CSS as well, but you know, there's the fact that if, when it was in here, it was triggered wherever it was. I forget now. But so, so next, like what we can do is we can take a look at the actual code of what happened. So we have a few options for doing this. Uh, we can just click ahead in uh, right here on the link for all JS line number twenty one. So let's do that. Okay. Um, so line number twenty one is uh, the remainder of the minified Java, uh, jQuery. So we'll use the prettify function down here. Do, 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 do. All right. Um, now come back. And uh, so what we're, we'll see, let's take a look at this again. Oh, no. Let me record another uh, timeline. I'll just scroll. Yeah. This. Yeah. Come back over, pick a long frame, go inside. Still doesn't let you, but does the stack trace change? No. What? Chrome Canary. Come on. All right. So what I'd like to see is um, what, what you'll normally catch in this case is you'll catch an instance where um, the pretty print will actually adjust all the uh, calls, the, the line numbers for the entire call stack. Um, this means that after you pretty print, you can dive into the original location uh, more or less and, and figure out what the story is. But the, the interesting part here is that um, we're going to be able to not only see kind of where this came from. So let's try it once more. Uh, pretty print, and come back to timeline. Hey, and here's, there's, this is what so I'm So this is for. stable. He switched to stable in case you didn't notice. Yeah, that. yeah, it comes stable. Um, All right, so now we have uh, our line number of three eight three five. So if we click through on this, um, so we're inside of jQuery. 
And what do you know? Offset width, offset height. Yeah. These are kind of classic candidates for something. And obviously, this is something that jQuery is using, um, which is perfectly reasonable to use. But it's something that you know, when you ask for the offset width or the offset height, Chrome's going to have to go off and figure out the answer for that, right? Right. And so, if we want to figure out why this happened, we can look at the call stack of this layout. And so typically, uh, what you're going to be looking at is this layout force section down here. Now, this is the location that forced that layout. The, in our case, it is that offset width, offset height. Um, but we can walk back the call stack, see we're inside jQuery, jQuery, jQuery. But we get back to here, get size info. Um, here on get size info, uh, we're able to basically, whoops, let me try that again. Just want to make sure that this is big enough for everyone to see. How about there yeah. we go? How are we doing now? Looking good. Yeah. All right. So get size info. Don't think it's jQuery. I'll click over to it. And here, all right. So get size info. We get the viewport width. We grab the wrapper. We walk up its parent chain twice, and we get the width of that parent. And so it looks like get size info is actually being called inside of tick, mm -hmm. and tick. Um, is being called how often? Every two seconds, maybe? Maybe more. 2,000, there we go. Set every interval. Right. Every two seconds. So that's set intervals. Because we figured this, is this part of the carousel or something like that? You know, do we know? <laughs> yeah, scroll up a little bit, I think. There we go, function carousel. Yep. So there's a carousel on the site, ticking every two seconds. It's kind of going into layout thrashing for whatever reason. Yeah, it's probably that one. There's a few the carousels. Oh, okay, yeah. there are a few carousels. Okay, so it's probably several carousels that are causing this. So you you're always probably in some kind of recalc layout style layout thrashing kind of mode, right? At some point or other. So right. In this case, there's a few options. Um, it's likely that actually the width of that parent parent probably isn't going to be changing. Right. Um, you can so if you're seeing this and you want to avoid this time spent in layout thrashing. You want to be able to cache these values, yeah. hold on to them, so you don't need to go back and re-query the DOM while, while the browser is trying to paint updates to the user. Yeah. Um, you want to just let it paint updates, and so give it all the truth uh, ahead of time. If, it is, if it's a responsive site, um, then you probably want to do it in things like the resize handler or something like that, just somewhere where you can actually say, look, I'm only caring when you actually definitely resize this stuff. So I, I would disagree. Ooh, where would you put it? <laughs> That's fine. Would you do it in a wrap? I did it in a wrap. Okay, you do it. Okay, fair enough. Do the pro version. <laughs> just, just set a wrap inside your resize handler. At which point you'll pick up the re request animation frame. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, I can't, actually, I want to spend a, a moment on this. Okay. Resize events. Um, <coughs> there's only a few things that you should ever do inside of a resize event or a scroll event. Um, let's take scroll because it's a little bit more common of an example. Okay. Inside a scroll event, you can ask for, um, let's say, get uh, you the scroll top, the scroll top metric. Um, you can also ask for the time, probably, um, mm -hmm. and that's about it. You do not want to do any other work inside the handler. So minimize the amount of work that you're doing in the handler. Do the work that you actually have to do. Inside of um, inside of request animation frame, mm -hmm. so that's where you're going to do your work. Uh, and what this allows the browser to do is it gets out of scroll. When you bind a scroll, it, what it means is that when it when a person puts their finger down on uh, on the on the site on your site and scrolls the page like that, everything that you have bound to a scroll handler means it has to execute that before it can even update the page mm -hmm. to to scroll to scroll it. Reacting to that finger move. Now the other thing is, you might actually get multiple scroll events per frame. Yeah. Right. So if you're doing work in there, you only probably care about the last one, right? right? And the other thing you want to do is, if you do this debouncing, which is what it's often referred to as, you want to make sure that you don't schedule multiple request animation frame callbacks. So you want to make sure that, in say, however many scrolls you've got, you just say, look, just set one request animation frame callback, store the value. Okay, and then inside that request animation frame callback, you say, well, what was the most recent value? Now do my visual updates yeah. and paint to the screen. This All is right. something that's really important uh, if you're doing any sort of like scrolling parallax site. Uh, mm -hmm. There are a few parallax scripts that do this exact technique. Stellar.js, I know, is one of them. Um, but this is something to watch out for to make sure that you do. Otherwise, uh, the performance of the scrolling in the parallax is going to be Jeez. really poor. Um, it's, uh, they can get bad. Yeah, should we roll on? Yeah, let's take a look. All right. <clears throat> 
All right, so um, we got a few more here. There's one up here at the top I want to take a quick look at. So this is Vuz. It is a big, big WordPress site. They are using Mod Page Speed already. Awesome. Um, what else can we do? So I opened this up earlier. Um, it's taken a while right now. It, it actually, the uh, domain was br.staticcontent. So I think actually we're in London. The, it's coming over the wire from Brazil. So yep. the transfer time is going to take a while. CDN would help for us, but not help for Brazilians. So all right. So it's a pretty basic site here. Um, so other than going into see the interaction speed of this, these form controls, um, what I thought would be interesting to look at kind of it from a network perspective. So I went to web page test uh, just before we started recording, and I dropped Vuz in here. And web page test usually only takes a few minutes. Now um, you changed the but you changed the location, right? From to oh, I did. Yeah. So you can actually uh, just say in here what the test location should be, and there's locations all over the globe. So if you want to get kind of a real world yeah. over the network experience. So you sent it to Buenos Aires, so Argentina, which is not so far away. It's still so South America. Yeah. So. OK. So it's a little bit nearer. So it's not skewed by our Londonness right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yeah, yes. Right. So uh, this is the report. And so WebPHS is going to give a lot of data. And it, one of the first, mo most important things is the waterfall. Um, I'll show right after it. This is the connection view. This is kind of is pretty rad. So. Uh, you'll have, so it looks at TCP connections. Sometimes a browser will share the same uh, TCP pipe. So actually, um, it requested uh, a JavaScript file on a single connection and then uh, another JavaScript file just sharing the exact same one. Um, this can be helpful uh, sometimes, but a lot of the time, what you're looking at is the waterfall. Now, so this at the very top is just the the HTML. Mm -hmm. It comes in. You can see we're taking a while. We're waiting on the server, um, but then it's downloading here. Um, but what I notice immediately is I notice a lot of JavaScript up at the top. So search box helper functions, jQuery, jQuery templating plugin, um, and since these are up at the top, yeah, because you'd expect you'd expect if this was in Flow, you'd expect all the images, everything else, and then best practice is JavaScript at the end, right? Yes. So so let's take a look. So we hop over, we view, we view source, bump, bump, find. I like uh, just bracket script. Make it better. bigger for everybody? Um, here we go. Actually, the most important thing, uh, it's hard to, probably hard to see, but way over here on the, on, the, on the right is the scroll bar. And you can see there's a lot of matches in my scroll bar on the very top right, whereas there's not matches at the bottom as much. Um, but so if we look up here on the top, you can see, yep, yep, here's all the scripts in the head. Um, and so we have jQuery, and then templating plugin, base, all these things. Um, so a browser is going to have to request and complete execution of all of these um, files before it even starts to show this sort of content to a user. Okay. Um, that's yeah. just how it works. This could be mitigated potentially with the async attribute up here. Um, but generally, the best practice is to throw all the scripts at the bottom, of course, um, concat as much as you can. Yeah. Um, so that is the obvious thing that I see from web page test waterfall. Um, anything else? Looks like the f the f there's flag images that are sprited. Um, Which is a good thing. Good thing. Right? One of the, so, so the comment actually says that mod page speed is enabled. Mod page speed by default is actually not too aggressive. Um, so I would take a look at configuring a few more filters to be turned on by default. One of my favorites is around images. Um, there is a lot of images stuff. Um, but yeah, here, this one at the top, this is rewrite images. So mod page speed is a module for Apache, also available for Nginx. Um, which is rad. This rewrite images does a few things. It inlines images. So if an image is under some threshold, it'll just do it as a data URI. So we, we now remove the, the additional request, right? Yep, absolutely. Okay. It'll recompress images to losslessly recompress them to be even smaller than they should be. Uh, uh, How does it do that? Sorry, it, yeah, losslessly, it's the same quality visually. OK. Get rid of excess stuff it, that doesn't need to be there. OK. Right. You know. Does it transcode? Um, no. Is that a different filter? Different filter. OK. So you've actually got options of just 
just optimizing your images on the fly, but not transcoding them over to, say, WebP, or assuming you've started with PNG or yes. uh, JPEG. And resize images, which is pretty pretty nice. So resize images will take effect if you have an inline width or height attribute oh. on the image tag, or an inline style. Mm -hmm. It will it will resize the image to fit natively as that size that the page is requesting it to be. I like it. Um, really powerful. So that gives it all all of those things for free. So if you um, are digging into Mod Page Speed or, or MJX Page Speed, which you should. Um, it does all this work for you, so your build script does not have to be as crazy. Um, dig into these filters, try some out, uh, mm -hmm. because there's a lot, a lot of power in there. That's, that's, I think that's really good to point out that just by having page speed is like step one, but step, definitely. Two, step two is definitely look at those filters, right? So yep. not just the kind of, and you're done. Yep. All right. Yep. Good. What's next? Uh, Surfcast? Do you want to meet the Ipsums? Meet the Ipsums. Uh, yeah, let's meet the Ipsums. Let's do it. This is a great little site. Uh, very amusing to me, this whole site. Uh, different forms of, uh, of lorem ipsum. Got some, uh, it was featuring cat ipsum and veggie ipsum, so celery, sea kale, you know, all these different kinds of veggies. Um, corporate ipsum, I like this one. Um, oh. Worked in those oh. kind of environments for a while. Oh, that's nice. Right, so I was looking at this, and I thought, this is great. It's a really clean, simple site. Um, and so I was busy looking at the timeline, as I always do. So I did a, a, a run, and then I was just scrolling, just like that. And it kind of felt janky. And I was like, but why? And then, so paint is a thing. Yeah, big thing. It's a big thing. Um, and you can see here, it's, I mean, it's, you can't see um, Chrome so much in the background. But as you roll over this uh, record, you actually see a blue area um, highlighted in Chrome, which is kind of it's the area that had to be repainted. And looking at the size of this thing, 1526 by 882, it's like, that's big. Right, we want to reduce paint size and paint complexity. And I'm thinking paint size is a good, a good first start here. Spin it down. There's a couple of paints in here that we can look at. And yeah, there's a couple of smaller ones. But clearly, there's this big paint. Yep. So I'm thinking, well, this is just scrolling. It doesn't seem to be doing much. I get to the end of the page, and there's this fixed, fixed position element of the background. Now, um, now, one thing that I was wondering, so like normally a paint, when you scroll, mm. um, at least on, on desktop, uh, the paint will just happen at the bottom, right? Like as I'm scrolling, the paint will supplement the new content that has come in? It's, it's going to paint whatever, yeah. So if you're scrolling, yes, it's exactly. If you're scrolling up or down, depends on which end of the, the page needs to be kind of handled. Yeah. Um, but what we're seeing here is that this paint is, you can see the kind of the, this blue highlight. It is the entire page. Yeah. Um, and then this one again, the entire page. Now, the reason for this is most likely that um, Chrome is looking at all the styles of all the elements, and it's grouping that fixed position element um, with the content that's scrolling. So as it scrolls, that, that fixed position element needs to be repainted so that it can fill up the viewport. And then the, the scrolling content sits over the top. So it's almost like it's pointless, right? Because it, yeah. And it's just one of these things, um, definitely looking at, we're looking at ways that we can make this better. The fix for it, if you're interested, um, would be to go into the elements and would be to promote the footer, which is this fixed, you can see it over here, position fixed, um, would be to promote this to its own layer so that um, basically all the compositor has to do is just leave that there yep. and the scrolling content can move over the top in its own layer. And the simplest way to do that that we all know, whoop, put that back, is to use the 3D transform. So you use it sparingly, but this is a classic case for it where we're painting something on every frame, something that doesn't need to be repainted. So let's do that web kit. Transform, why not? Say it with me now. Translate the. <laughs> yeah, no, right. It's so catchy. I mean, I've even caught my non nerdy wife talking about it. No, I really. <laughs> it's, it's a lie. It's a lie. All right, so I've translated it. Does it look any different? Maybe, maybe not. Let's find out. Let's, let's do a test and see what happens when we scroll. Uh, so, now, nice. so now we've, got, we've much reduced our paint costs. Now, there are other things going on here, but. That's the main thing in this right now. Can we take a look at this with um, uh, show paint rectangles? Yeah. Because is are we going to see a difference between uh, before and after that? Yeah. That so change? we don't need to do anything other than we can toggle the style on and off. So what we'll do is we'll pop down to the cog here. Uh, we can switch on show paint rectangles, and we do that. That's all we need to do. And uh, fact, let's just close. Yeah. Thank you. I, you love. You know all the shortcuts. I. I uh. Escape. Uh, is that what it is? Yeah, there you go. Wow, I feel better for knowing that. <laughs> Finding that out on air. That's good. It's good to go. Um, so what I need to do is I need to go back to the elements. I need to switch off my, my Translate Z. Now, 
when I scroll, you'll see that whole thing is bright red, as is the scroll bar on the right hand side. And that's just Chrome saying, you know what, these are the things I had to paint. So the scroll bar makes perfect sense. That's normal. Yep. But seeing that whole thing, oh, that's not so good. Um, so when we switch on the Translate Z, um, we push that out to its own layer, that ba uh, background out to its own layer. What's going to actually happen is that the content that's sitting over the top is also going to get its own layer. Um, but we basically have separated them out. We've kind of forced Chrome's hand a little bit. And now when we scroll, there it is. There we go. So, nice. so using Show Paint Rectangles or even just uh, DevTools, um, you'll find that you'll actually see um, when things are painting. And that's actually, yeah. So you can see that, yeah, when we, <laughs> including sound effects. <laughs> uh, when you get to the top, yeah, obviously this is, this is you know, again, it makes sense for this to probably. Uh, uh, oh. But they could probably another use. Another opportunity. Yeah, there is another opportunity. Instead of, I'm guessing, 2D transforms here. Yep. If it were me, I'd look at 3D transforms again. These are, these are things that don't want to interact with each other. They just want to move around. They want their own layer. OK, we need. We need two disclaimers here, two separate disclaimers. Oh, OK. OK, the I'll first one, first one you, you kind of wrote about, I think. I'm just going to guess at Error the twist, just, I, layer no, promotion, maybe? Try it. Let's, Let's see. see. Oh, on All right, yeah. yeah. OK, cool. Uh, so Paul wrote this blog post about the, the layer promotion, Translate Z, Translate 3D hack. Yeah, it's actually one of about six or seven rules that Chrome will use when it's deciding to put something on its own layer. And Translate Z is the most well-known yeah. of, of the family. Um, and so it, it is a hack. Yeah. And we feel interesting about <laughs> recommending it. Um, yeah. and, and this article uh, explains some of the yes. downsides and some of the things that you need to be aware of. Yes. It's not just like a silver bullet. It no. has downsides. Yes. So read this. Yes. Um, and the other, the other disclaimer, I think, is about cross-browserness. Yeah. Of all the things that we're talking about today. This is the least cross-browser. Thing right? Is it? Yeah, oh yeah, it doesn't. Not gonna even Chrome on Chrome on Android. Yeah, uh, it really uh, doesn't. And these things. Chrome on Android, and also uh, word on the street is that Safari no longer honors it as a layer creation. Yeah. Or it certainly won't do in the future. So. Yeah. And it's not. I mean, you know, it's a WebKit uh, prefixed uh, thing, so it's not going to work in Firefox. But uh, the network stuff that we showed before. Yeah. Absolutely, cross, like cross browser layout thrashing. The way that the specs are written for for HTML recalculation style, like. The browsers have a lot of consistency between how they work, so layout thrashing is yep. is real it's everywhere. It's called reflow in Firefox. Reflow, right? yeah, it's the exact same thing. And so when you see like reflow as a term, it's this issue. Yeah. Um, and so it's a cross browser th situation. Yes. Um, anything else? Expensive paints. Uh, expensive paints can be. Exp it's hard to say. And right now, there's uh, for what's expensive to paint in Firefox and IE. Um, is a little unclear. Yeah, we're hoping to find out yeah. more about that. Yeah, I think that's the thing. I mean, you have to profile it. Um, it's not always easy to do that in a cross-browser way, and you obviously don't want to do anything that is an anti-pattern elsewhere. But generally speaking, not painting yeah. is a good pattern for everybody. You know, not painting is not painting irrespective of your browser. So it's a good thing. Do you want to hit another one? Yeah, I want to try this one. Um, whew, I okay. Let's let's get a, take a look. All right, so we got, oh wow, yeah. There's okay. a bit of load time right here. Is that slow? I'm just gonna I'm gonna bump that into web page test while we kind of wait for it. It's like, uh, it's like two tests in one. Yeah, let's go for it. We'll use. Oh, oh what's up? Sounds like sounds like it's got sound. We got sound coming here. I'm gonna turn it off just because. Whoa, 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 whoa! Chill out, guys. All right, wait in the front of the queue. Good, go back. Uh, what do we do? Click. Click. And then you hit the arrow. Uh, the think it's okay. Yeah, try using. There we go. Okay, now now you roll your mouse around, and now I don't know if you can see this on the video, but this is this is hideously janky. This is really bad. This was submitted by someone who wanted us to talk about it. I mean, sorry. I feel like you're being a bit mean. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> this, this, I mean, this is this is taking like upwards of a second to update the screen. These are uh, Voron eyes. It's a Voron eye map yeah. behind it. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's take a look at why. All right. So I'm going to command option I into DevTools. We're going to head into timeline soon. Come on, play nice. You make it mad. I'm making it very mad. Hey, we're just friends. 
You crash the browser? We can, we can, and you can, come on. Oh, it is really mad. Yeah, you made it mad. This is what I get for. Telling me off. <laughs> <laughs> browser sided with me. Uh, let's uh, right. kill that one. Oh, that was the one that I didn't, oh no. You didn't want that to happen. I didn't want that to happen. This goes to show uh, profiling is not always the easiest task. <laughs> Sometimes these things break. All right, that looked good. Looked like you had it there. All right, I think I got it. So, let's give this a shot. We got timeline open. I got this. Yep. Maybe you have to press a key. Play with me. This is translate. It's trying to take over. I don't want you translate. We might need to leave this one. Eh? Leaving it. All right. I used to, before movie theater, there was this like pre-roll and it was advertising movietickets.com and there's this really funny ad where the, the woman, they're getting out of the minivan and it's like mission impossible to get the movie tickets. And then, and then the, the kid falls getting out of the movie van and the mom was like, leave him, leave him. And, and my mom really loves that commercial, which. <laughs> I'm saying so much <laughs> about your so much about your upbringing right now. Thanks in like that 20 seconds, <laughs> I didn't expect that. If I'm honest, <laughs> folks, I hope you, you enjoyed that as much as I did. <laughs> wow, wow, it's there. Yeah. Oh, this is paint rectangles. Show paint rect is on. That's probably why. It's probably mad. Yeah, it's really mad at us. All right. All right. Okay. So we're going to move to something else. This is um, Bayzad, uh, designer and developer. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look. So you can, it says we can use kind of the key, keys here, the down. Mi this is looking pretty good, right? It's really like, nice. This is looking pretty. Wow. Wow. Someone hire this man. <laughs> All right. But there's this kind of like playful kind of, the background is parallaxing two two directions as these kind of play a little yeah. bit. Yeah, and I'm seeing when but I'm watching say watching the phone <coughs> here on the on this in this image, it's kind of janking around. Like it doesn't feel like it's it's smooth motion. I don't know. Do I'm you wondering about this? Do you think we can improve it? Well, I don't know. Let's Honestly, find out, um, let's find out what I it's think doing. it's okay. So let's see. Okay, I'm seeing so paint. It's all right? paint. It's all paint. I paint Rex is still on. I'm going to make sure that that's off. Yeah, you, yeah, that'll be. We good want idea. that. All right. Not, I don't, you want to start that? Not going to change anything. Mm -hmm. No, it's all the same. All right. Okay, <coughs> I'm using Command D. Uh, it's fast. All right, so we look in, and we're all just we're in paint land. Image resize. Image resize. Fifty milliseconds. Wow. Who knew? Now. Wow. Okay. That's really good to know. Okay, so image resize. Unexpected. So, decoding and resizing are like the dependencies for paint. So when right. Chrome hits something that it's got to paint. It goes right. Do I need any images for this? And it doesn't keep the like. It keeps the PNG or the JPEG in memory, but it doesn't keep the bitmap for that. Like the expanded, decon, decompressed version of that in memory. So what it does, it goes off on the fly and says, right, uh, decode and decompress that image out to a bitmap and then resize it down. Right. So because we don't see a decode here, it's something that was already decoded and resident in memory, but it was it had to be resized. Yeah. Um, so is this image clearly? You think? Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm done with it. Yeah, I don't really know where it is, but no. Yeah, it was. It's in here. Are you in here? Yep. I'm using H to kind of navigate the DOM and hide parts. That's in there. Got it. Okay. So, oh yeah, naturally, uh, 220 pixels. I mean, it's a big image. 2,200. The, right. the yes, the larger the image, the more expensive the resize will cost. Yeah, which makes sense. Um, but so, and this doesn't actually make. I mean, for me, I was looking at this, and it's not, it's not resizing, or it doesn't seem to be resizing. As you were moving your, it was moving left and top, or translating, but it wasn't resizing. So I wonder why, why there's a resize going on. So it's definitely yeah, left and tops. So maybe maybe something is resizing it, but it's it seems unusual to need to resize it at all. It could just be. I guess what I'm driving at is it could be served at that size potentially. And the problem would be so. Yeah, solved. okay. Let's. Um, but I mean, just looking at this profile, I mean, this is all green, right? This is all paintwork that's happening. Yeah, but I think, like, I mean, it's triggered off of a mouse move. There's a mouse move that's, yeah. that's watching the work. Command O. Uh, Command O. Uh, uh, 
What are you doing? I'm wanna, I'm really interested in in what happens inside this image. I don't blame you. I'm I'm fascinated too. But okay, I'm, I'm just trying. Geo one. All right. Okay. Because you're going quick, you. and I'm wondering what if people are going to follow what you're well, doing. Well, okay. So I just found here's we grabbed the image. Can I? He's got. We're in the mouse move, right? Okay, we're yeah. in the mouse move inside the smart start screen. So it's, it looks like it's only just mouse moves inside the start screen, which is good, better yeah. than the entire document. Yep, yep, yep. <coughs> uh, but we re grab that element every. So are you doing a jQuery traversal every single mouse move, which we don't need to. Obviously, we can cache that. I'm so I'm seeing width and height. All over the place, which feels like something that wouldn't change. With the height, um, probably not going to change. No, I mean it's only you could do those off a request animation frame off a window resize. And then we just do a bunch of math um, for the position of the mouse and yeah. the current width height. Yeah. And then we just set the left top to get the. Oh, it looks like we, he tried some animation, and that probably didn't perform well. It's interesting that there's a, oh, a, a failed a failed 3D transform down there. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to know why that was. Come on, live at it, bro. Uh, live at it. I would love to know why. That's smooth. That is smooth. That's amazing. Let's go back. Okay, timeline looked like this. Okay. Wendy, what the? Wait, wait. Here we go. Blah 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 blah. That's that's that seems that's, better. That seems better, right? That seems, seems better. That's breaking through less often. Let's switch it back. Yeah. All right. So we, we're so seeing sixty frames a second. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> like that. This was all set up for us. I know. It, it, it genuinely Commandy. wasn't. That's the that's the best bit of this. That, right. Yeah. Okay. That, that, what is uh, going on? That doesn't feel like it. All right. Is that doing the right thing? Did you save the change? Yeah. Yeah. I did. Are you sure? Yeah. I'm sure. Okay. Here, I'm gonna. This is probably a better way to do it. You wanna reload? <coughs> no, not reloading. Okay. Uh, start, move. Uh, 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 uh. Come over here. Sources. Quick, 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 quick. Save. Patch to V8. Come back. And, and, go. And. Hard to say. Very hard to say. <laughs> Based on what you just did. <laughs> it does, it does. I mean, at first glance, it looked like. <laughs> I mean, you saw what I did, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was just fast. <laughs> it was just ah, ah. Yeah, well, sorry. Yeah, you know. It does. Okay. That's what it's like. I think I was making Paul Irish. <laughs> <laughs> some people are slow, some people are fast, and then there's Paul Irish. I, uh, yeah. So um, it looks like it actually was c more costly. I would be, I, I would be interested in spending a bit more time on this if I were the author. I think based but, on he tried it and he, and he saw this and then he went back and I'm like, I'm just gonna set left top, which is which is cray cray because. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've anyways. Okay. But I still think, it, for me, I, I would look at the 3D transform again. It seems like that might be the better option here. <sighs> it's hard to say for sure, but it it seems like it might be worth trying. Yeah. The other thing I think it's probably important is uh, we we keep asking about the width and height of this image, and it might be that which is causing the resize. Like like the browser's not. Uh, terribly confident in what the actual size is and so yeah, okay. it's going to ask again yeah I mean, there's, and there's no reason to keep those to keep querying the width and height there I think that's definitely something um, to take a look at that's monster that is monster big isn't it yeah right. um, the other thing so yeah we should you want to show continuous paint on any of this um I don't know so it's hard to say. So these paints are big. Um, and so we can go in and turn on uh, continuous paint mode down here. And I'll just redock my dev tools. And so what it's going to do is it's just going to paint the page again and again and again. And up here in the top right of the page, we'll see how long it takes to paint. Um, and from here, we can just toggle things on and off. We're going to use the H key. Um, so I turn off the background. And the paint performance improves a little bit. It's not noticeably so. Not dramatically. So this is so this taps into the other thing. When we were talking about paint areas before, that's like part one, right? Part two is paint complexity, which is what this tool is trying to show. It's like if if it's if Chrome starts from nothing and it's got to paint everything that's on screen, how long does that process take, right? Yep. So it's kind of fluctuating, what roughly between, well, somewhere around the eight to ten mark, yeah. I'd say, um, which means it's not terribly complex to to repaint at this point. Um, it's not that bad. I mean, there it, it could be could be much it better. Could be worse, but that, sometimes you'll see uh, huge spikes in the actual paint time from yeah you know, when it's painting from from scratch. So so I want to try one thing. Well, yeah, yeah. Here yeah. we're gonna we're gonna 
turn on, uh, I like doing composite layer borders at the same time as uh, paint rects. Um, you got show paint rectangles on. Do I? I think. Yeah, yeah. You got and show you paint rects. Yeah, but you haven't got layer borders. You need to switch on the forced. There you Thank go. you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, nothing's promoted. Here, this yeah, was this uh, was what I was thinking. I was thinking of promoting these navs. Okay. Terrible? I don't know. I don't know. Let's find out. All right. Uh, this guy. Mm. Yep, yep, yep. WebKit, transform. The reason, so the reason you, I would assume you're doing this is because it's over the top of something else. It's opacity. And you're concerned that it's, it's grouping them together into a single... A single bitmap in memory? Yeah, yeah. And because you want to break it out into its own layer, right? Yeah, because uh, in Timeline, we did see a good amount of compositing uh, costs, like this composite layers. Mm -hmm. And I'm guessing that um, because these nav items have an opacity on them, uh, <coughs> um, it's having to do the compositing against the background mm -hmm. on every single move. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I'm guessing that if we drop them out into layers. Yeah, then it's just all it's got to do is it's got to just you know let the GPU deal with that for us. Seems. Uh, you know, that seems pretty nice-ish. You want to um, profile it? I'll profile it. Don't guess it. Test it. Perfect. I couldn't have asked for it. You're just the best. <laughs> All right. I turned off those two debug modes and turn it back on. Oh, come on! Nailed it! And that's how we do it. <laughs> <laughs> This is, this, is, this is genuinely how we do this. Um, this is why we didn't look at these too closely before we started. Um, hey, do you want to talk about the transparent frame thing a little bit? Uh, that's oh, yeah, yeah. Um, OK, so, so I'm, I'm going to start. You, then you, yeah, then you okay. OK. All right. Um, if you're in timeline a lot, uh, you're going to see, so like these vertical bars, right? And there's color at the bottom of them, of course. Um, and but. Then there's like empty space. There is this little dark gray area here, mm -hmm. and that represents uninstrumented code. So we know that Chrome is doing work, but we're not exactly sure what kind of work. We're improving that. Um, so gray should disappear over time. Yeah, but then there's but then there's this case where there's kind of this this empty area leading up to like the 60 FPS line. Now we don't care about those, right? Doesn't matter. That part really is not a big concern. Um, you are hitting your frame budget, and Chrome's it's responsibility here is to deliver a frame on the VSync of the monitor. Yes. Which means every time the monitor is going to bring a, a frame to my eyes, it wants to have something ready for it. And so if so we're so generally hitting that. This is room to spare, basically, is what we're saying, right? Yeah. This is empty space. It's like Chrome saying, I'm done. I can you know, chill out until the end of this frame. Yeah. That's, but then there's the odd frame that we're seeing here, which like is this guy, which is shooting out the top. And it is all empty space. Right. And so there's two things to look at here. One is, is uh, so you see these gray bars that are kind of in my timeline view. Now you can switch those on, right? In yeah. The, in so the inside uh, settings, some somewhere down here is uh, showing CPU there activity on the ruler. Um, and so it's off by default. You'll have to turn it on. Um, but here you get an idea of, is the CPU active? Um, if the CPU is active, maybe like something outside of Chrome is doing a lot mm -hmm. of work, which is why Chrome had to slow down. Um, so you get an idea on. S so what kind of work is being so done. the thing to do here is to make sure if you're going to do these profiles and you see something like this and you want to just rule out other yeah. other apps do that close them down make sure Chrome is the only thing that's running ideally if you can really do it just go into in uh, incognito mode make sure this is the only thing that's running in a tab so it's just complete as isolated Kill as it can all be other tabs. Like incognito no extensions yeah nothing yep uh, so it's just running by itself so that that kind of as best as you can is going to eliminate the uh, the kind of uh, vying for the CPU's attention but problem. in this case. I do not have CPU activity exactly there. I mean, it's right here, right here, and right here. Um, yeah. Does so? What's? Can you tell me more about what's going on here? Sometimes, sometimes that's going to be, uh, it's going to be waiting on. It's going to be Chrome waiting on GPU. Is the simple version of this, right? It's just Chrome saying, "I need some. Uh, I need the GPU to do its work. Do some compositing, for example. Uh, just deal with some stuff. Finish its workload." Uh, and that at the moment is uh, currently showing as empty. So sometimes it's just simply. And again, it might not be. Right. We've only got one GPU normally in these things, so it might not be Chrome that's waiting on the GPU, or it's waiting on the GPU, but it might be something else on your system that's actually using the GPU. So don't don't always assume that it's a browser, but it, it can be waiting on CPU and wait, waiting on GPU. So one one use case that you mentioned to me about this was um, a lot of times in a WebGL situation, yes. you might be uploading textures to the GPU. Mm. Um, 
Uploading textures in G to the GPU generally can take a good amount of time. Yeah, especially um, on mobile. Especially on mobile. So that might be um, an indication of something that might be happening here. I should point out this is something that the, the dev tools will get better at and will be able to help give you more insight yeah. into what time is being absorbed here yeah. and why. Um, but but for now, that's a good Yeah, hint. and I don't think there's anything as a developer that's direct, directly actionable typically here as well. If, they're not yeah. if you're not dealing with WebGL or Canvas or something that's super GPU heavy, um, then the chances are it's just something to do with Chrome's overhead is probably the most likely candidate. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, uh, I think we, uh, yep. should, should we finish? Yeah, let's finish. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you want to dig in more into uh, these tools and what's available, um, you can just Google DevTools. Uh, the Chrome DevTools documentation will come up. It talks a lot about timeline, yep. um, continuous paint, things like that. We also just posted a, about a lot of the new features on HTML5Rocks.com, yep. including we didn't show the flame chart. You want to just give us uh, a minute. We'll show you a flame chart. Flame chart. He, flame he chart. loves the flame chart. I, to be fair, I'll just. Paul requested the flame chart. <laughs> It was his feature request. Come on. It landed. He's so happy. I'm uh, so happy for it is him. my feature, yeah. It, it's just the best. Uh, I'll, I'll give a really good example for the for the flame chart, too, uh, so. because it's just worth it. <clears throat> All right. Even if he says so. Come over to your math jacks. It's a MathML polyfill. Um, we're going to bring up DevTools really quick. And uh, I'm going to start a CPU profile. So flame chart is a visualization of a JavaScript profile. Yeah, OK. OK? Start. Change to SVG rendering. Go. Change to HTML rendering. Go. SVG. Go. Boom. Done. Command D. OK. Awesome. Now, it won't be flame child by default, though, right? You have to. No. You have yeah. To yeah. Thank over. you. Down at the very bottom uh, is the toggle. So it'll be probably uh, heavy bottom up. And this is like the one that everyone's used to seeing, yeah. right? Uh, which, to be fair, is pretty difficult for a lot of people to kind of understand and get that. I think so, too. I think so, too. Which is so why you suggested the flame chart. Hey, uh, <coughs> flame chart. So we got a flame chart here. So the cool thing here is it's time uh, timeline based. So we're seeing from the beginning of my recording to the seven seconds uh, that I recorded, um, and uh, we can see that in the minimap. So this is the first time that it changed to SVG, and um, I know because I've looked at this before. There's a lot of like, interrupted CPU activity. This is because there's network activity kind of interrupting this. That's something that. But once I had it in place, you can see it's just straight up stuff going on. Uh, let me try and maximize this a little bit more. I'm going to have to zoom out a touch. There is a lot of stuff going on here. And what the, the way to parse these graphs is y-axis is call stack. Call stack is not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing that your call stack is necessarily deep. Um, so height is not terribly important. Um, width is what soaks up time. Because this is time, right? Yeah, so exactly. Time is, is on the, on is the is Longer it is, right? Longer is worse, right? <laughs> um, <Normally>. And so, <laughs> OK. Um, and so we we can kind of scroll in. I can zoom by just like going up and down on the trackpad. I can also page uh, just by dragging over here. And we can take a look at kind of where my time was spent. And the other nice thing is that we can understand a little bit about the execution flow of the application by seeing that things started off. We went into uh, set mode renderer math jacks, and we did a little bit of prep work up here. We moved into this remove child. This is doing some SVG work. This remove child took six milliseconds, which is a pretty long so time. So I tell you, because this, I mean, this is quite difficult when you're looking at these things, and it's not your own code. Yeah. If you run this against your own code, you're going to get a. You're going to recognize the functions. You're going to recognize the objects. Yeah. You're going to recognize everything that you see here, and you're going to be like, "Oh wow, I didn't realize I was spending so long doing that." Yeah. So uh, flame chart. Awesome. Good. Um, uh, very very useful when you identify that you are spending a lot of time in JavaScript in particular. Yes. Uh, it's not appropriate when you see that you're spending time in paint, paint. layout, recalc styles, things yeah. like that. Uh, but should help quite a bit. Which is always the case. You know, always find your actual bottleneck and fix that one, not the thing you think is the bottleneck. Should we close on that? Yes. Boom. Boom. Thank you. <laughs>